the 25th day of December, in the 5,199th year of the creation of the world, from the time when God in the beginning created the heavens and the earth, the 2,957th year after the flood, the 2,015th year from the birth of Abraham, the 1,510th year from Moses and the going forth of the people of Israel from Egypt, the 1,032nd year from David's being anointed king, in the 65th week, according to the prophecy of Daniel, in the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, the whole world being at peace, in the sixth age of the world, Jesus Christ, the eternal God and Son of the eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, and nine months having passed since his conception, was born in Bethlehem of Judea of the Virgin Mary, being made flesh. The nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the flesh.
Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. Good evening, please be seated.
please stand and join us in singing Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let us our songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Please be seated.
Good evening, and Merry Christmas, and welcome to St. Mary's Cathedral for tonight's Christmas Midnight Mass. Please be sure you've obtained a mass program. They are located at the uh, entrance of our cathedral at the welcome desk. The programs contain all the music as well as some announcements uh, for tonight and going forward. Catholics believe that the Eucharist is the true body and blood of Jesus Christ, and our sharing in the Eucharist brings us closer into unity with our Lord's Church. We invite practicing Catholics who are prepared and properly disposed to receive communion to come forward at that time. Others present not receiving communion should join with us in song and in prayer. The standard practice for receiving communion in the United States is to stand. However, if you prefer to kneel, we will provide kneelers in the center aisles for you to use. We will take a collection during the offertory moment tonight, and we ask that you please be sure to take any personal items with you when you leave today, including any tissues or papers, and the mass programs are yours to keep as well. Thank you, and we will, be, we will begin very shortly. Please stand for the singing of our introit hymn. Not 
Rete, Retem Angelorum, Venite Adoremus, Venite Adoremus, Venite Adoremus, Dominum. Sing, choirs of angels, sing in exultation, sing all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Yea, Lord, we greet thee on this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be all glory give. Word of the Father, now in flesh appear. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My dear friends, it is my great pleasure to welcome here to our Cathedral of St. Mary of the Assumption, and in particular to our visitors with us tonight. We're so happy you have joined us on this most holy night when we celebrate with great thanksgiving and joy God's gift to the world, the gift of his Son, to free us from sin and death. As we are grateful to God for so many blessings that we are aware of at this time, at the beginning of our Mass, let us recall our need of God's mercy. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils, for the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as in the day of Midian. For every booth that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us. A son is given us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They named him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace, his dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Christus natus est. O die, O die, Christus natus est. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Christus natus est. O die, O die, Christus natus est. O die, O die, Christus natus est. Sing to the Lord, dias tras dias, su grandezas nunciamos a los pueblos, de nación en nación, sus maravillas, Christus natus est. O die, O 
Gaudie, Christus natus es. Gaudie, Gaudie, Christus natus es. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all therein. Then the trees of the forest exalt. O die, O die, Christus natus est. O die, O die, Christus natus est. They shall exalt before the Lord, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with peace and the peoples with constancy. O die, O die, Christus natus est. O die, O die, Christus natus est. de la carta del apóstol San Pablo a Tito. Querido hermano, la gracia de Dios se ha manifestado para salvar a todos los hombres y nos ha enseñado a renunciar a la vida sin religión y a los deseos mundanos para que vivamos ya desde ahora de una manera sobria, justa, fiel a Dios en espera de la gloriosa venida de Dios el Salvador, Cristo Jesús, nuestra esperanza. Él, Él se entregó por nosotros para redimirnos de todo pecado y purificarnos, a fin de convertirnos en pueblo suyo, fervorosamente entregado a practicar el bien. Palabra de Dios. Aleluya, aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya. Tomorrow, the wickedness of the earth will be destroyed. The Savior of the world will reign over us. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Cornelius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in the region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant trapped in a swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there were a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those to on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What an enchanted time of the year this is. Christmas and all of the other holy days and holidays during these weeks, but especially Christmas, is so filled with fond memories and cherished traditions, 
It's a season rich in time-honored rituals and symbols. Of course, there is obviously the, the Christmas tree and the ritual involved in decorating it, the Christmas wreath, stockings by the fireplace, wrapping of presents and placing them under the tree, and so forth and so on, so many others. Many of these symbols and rituals now have a secular meaning to them, but they all originate from a religious meaning. For Christians, though, and especially for us Catholics, the most cherished of all has retained its specifically religious meaning, the Christmas creche or nativity scene. It was exactly 800 years ago at this time that St. Francis of Assisi set up the first nativity scene in the town of Greccio, Italy, a small town in Umbria near where he was living in a hermitage. The story is well known and it is believed that Francis was inspired with this idea from his pilgrimage to the Holy Land three years before. St. Francis's first biographer, Brother Thomas of Celano, explained that St. Francis desired to, as he put it, represent the birth of that child in Bethlehem in such a way that with our bodily eyes, we may see what he suffered for lack of the necessities of a newborn babe and how he lay in a manger between the ox and ass. People from all around flocked to contemplate the scene during Christmas Mass. In other words, what we hear here is telling us that Francis wanted to emphasize the real human experience of that first Christmas night, that God truly became a human being, being born as a baby from a virgin mother. There was at the time a theological movement that diminished the reality of the humanity of Christ and looked almost exclusively to his divinity, failing to take full account that the God beyond us and above us is also among us in the most humble way possible. This is a good lesson too for us, especially at this time of the year when it is so easy to romanticize that night when Christ was born. It is good that we put much effort and artistry and hard work and love into decorating our nativity scenes. But the beauty of the art should inspire us to contemplate the historical moment in its full reality and not de de distract us from it. Francis wanted to make real to us today what it was actually like then. And I suppose it doesn't make, take much effort to imagine what it was really like. He was born at this time of the year during the night, the cold in the middle of a winter night, the smell of the animals there in the stable, and well, let's face it, there's also what animals leave on the ground. Not exactly a pleasant smell. And then there were the shepherds. They had shepherds for company. The shepherds had just come in from the fields. So they probably didn't smell much better than the animals. So all of this, this uh, poverty and squalor, all the more so because shepherds were, back then they were considered the dregs of society. They were poor, they were out in the fields and they were regarded as sort of shady figures. So they were left out in the cold figuratively as well as literally. But for Francis, this humiliation of the Son of God, the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, who became a child born in a stable in the midst of squalor and animals and poor peasants, this was the model of spiritual perfection. He who is the ruler of all chose to be subject to his creation to the point of offering his life on the cross to free us from sin. While this reminder of our Lord's humanity serves us well in our own time, perhaps what we need more now is a reminder of his divinity. 
it seems to me that our tendency in our own time runs in the other direction, to see the Son of God as no more than a friend, a companion, someone who walks with us. This is all true, of course, but perhaps to see him as too much of an equal. After all, as God, he has a claim on us. He has dominion over us, and we are accountable to him. We do well to acknowledge that this is not an oppressive kind of a dominion, however. It is a liberating one. But it is liberating only when we order our lives according to his way. As God, he came to liberate us from sin by his death on the cross, his passion, which so deeply moved Francis in contemplating our Lord's birth. Our Lord accomplished this as both God and man united in one person, and the signs of the passion are there at his birth, already there. St. Luke tells us that Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. These swaddling clothes foretell the burial cloths with which Jesus' body would be wrapped when placed in the tomb after his crucifixion. And the wood of the manger anticipates the wood of the cross, the tree on which he would undo the damage done at the tree in the garden when the serpent deceived our first parents and we lost friendship with God. This is the original religious meaning of the Christmas tree, the tree of the cross as scripture refers to it, the tree of the cross which conquers the tree in the garden, restoring our friendship with God and giving us the gift of eternal life. Present at this birth are also the signs of God's enduring presence with us. What is a manger but a trough, a container from which animals are fed? He came to feed us with his very body and blood. Being born in Bethlehem, a small insignificant town whose name means house of bread. It was not enough for him to humble himself by coming down once to be with us in the form of a human body. He continues to empty himself by coming down from heaven to be present with us sacramentally in the form of bread and wine, the gift of his body and blood in the most holy Eucharist. He thus continues the mystery of his incarnation by taking on flesh at each mass, feeding us with his body and blood, which is another mystery that moved St. Francis so deeply in contemplating our Lord's humility. St. Francis was most zealous in safeguarding the due reverence we owe to the Blessed Sacrament, and he constantly urged that Mass be celebrated in a most dignified and sacred way. He is recorded to have said the following. All those who saw the Lord Jesus according to his humanity and did not see and believe according to the Spirit and the Godhead that he is the true Son of God were condemned. And now in the same way, all those who see the sacrament of the body of Christ, which is sanctified by the words of the Lord upon the altar at the hands of the priest in the form of bread and wine, and who do not see according to the Spirit and the Godhead that it is truly the most holy body and blood of Christ, are likewise condemned. These are strong words, but they come from his conviction that the real presence of Christ in the sacrament is just as true as his real presence to us in his birth at Bethlehem. And what about us? The church in our country is in the midst of a Eucharistic revival movement, seeking to reclaim this core Catholic belief in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Could it be that the casual attitude toward the Blessed Sacrament that has become so pervasive in the church nowadays is a consequence of an attitude that would demote the Son of God from his divinity to being simply a good friend equal to us in our humanity? Failing to recognize his body, blood, soul, and divinity under the appearances of bread and wine in the Holy Eucharist leads to failing to recognize his divinity under the appearance of his human body in the Incarnation, and so 
a failure to order our lives accordingly. Which brings us to the harsher realities we are facing today. I began by speaking of this season of the year as an enchanted time filled with fond memories. And yet we know there is much suffering in our midst and often even in our own families. We are all the more horrified on the global scale as we witness wars and violence and all kinds of atrocities around the globe, most especially in that very land in which our Lord was born. Christmas will be very quiet in Bethlehem this year. It is too dangerous to celebrate it in the usual way. We grieve over this. We grieve that the land which we call holy has been scarred by wars and atrocities for millennia. Isaiah prophesies, prophesies an end to this in words familiar to us at this Christmas time. This passage from Isaiah is always the first reading for this uh, Mass during the night. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. And he goes on to proclaim these words of comfort. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. An end to war and bloodshed. Isaiah is prophesying here centuries before our Lord's birth. And it has to do with an occupying force who has conquered Israel, destroyed their kingdom, and now has, are oppressing them. That's what he's referring to when he speaks about the yoke and the pole and the rod of their taskmaster. These are symbols of Assyrian oppression. He's telling us that God will not allow his people to be oppressed indefinitely. He will come to their rescue and set them free. How will he do this? For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. That is, he will send them a king to deliver them from their oppressors. Tonight we celebrate the fulfillment of that promise. In this child, born in Bethlehem, are summed up all of the hopes and aspirations of Israel, the culmination of all of its history of conquests and being conquered. But God goes beyond even what they had envisioned, sending his own son to deliver them and to deliver all those who choose to follow him, to deliver them from the true oppressor, sin and death. This king, the son of God, is the one named Prince of Peace. And yet, war is still with us. Brutality abounds. Does the birth of God's son, the fulfillment of this promise, really make any difference? Which brings us to the third lesson to be learned in contemplating the nativity scene. First, we learn about the humanity of Christ and the reality of that situation into which he was born. Second, we learn about his divinity and how he would save us from our sins by his passion on the death on the cross and remain present with us, feeding us with his body and blood in the most holy Eucharist. And we also learn about a rightly ordered universe. Let us contemplate that scene. At the center of it is the baby, the Christ child. Immediately surrounding him are his parents. And then the shepherds who represent the wider community. They were the first to believe. The angel announced first before anyone else to these shepherds and they followed to the stable to, to uh, worship this child, the first to believe. They represent the community of believers. And overlooking the whole scene are angels and the stars, the physical and spiritual heavenly realities. A rightly ordered universe has Christ at the center, with the family unit nurturing that Christ-centered life in the home, supported by the believing community 
in, un in union with those who pray for us from heaven. Christ at the center. This means taking God at his word, trusting that what he teaches is true, and seeking to live our lives after the pattern of the altruistic love which he has modeled for us. God began the work of building a great civilization through his original chosen people of old, and he fulfills that in the birth, death, and resurrection of his son, inviting all to be a part of this great story. But it only works when we follow his example of self-emptying love, walking the path of humility, seeking to love one another as he has loved us. The history of God's people, both Israel of old and the Church of the New Covenant, is filled with examples of infidelity to God's covenant and all the misery that that brings into the world. But it is also replete with examples of saints who are lights to us, teaching us the way to peace and salvation by their self-identification to Christ. We can see no greater example of this than our own patron saint, Francis of Assisi. At that first Christmas, when he set up the manger scene in church and as a deacon preached that Christmas Mass, he held the figure of the Christ child in his hands to present to the people for their devotion. After the Mass, people went into the sanctuary to take pieces of the straw to keep as relics. Reports of miracles then began to circulate. Sick animals that ate the straw recovered their health and women about to give birth touched the straw and had easy deliveries of their babies. Miracles can happen in our own time, too, if we keep Christ at the center and fulfill faithfully all of the responsibilities to which he calls us according to our state in life. We do not have to resign ourselves to being conquered by sin. He gives us the power to conquer it and be set free free to be healed, free to live in peace, free to love, free to know, love, and serve him in this life, and to live perfectly happy with him forever in heaven. May God grant us this grace. Amen. Credo in unum Deum. Et in unum Dominum, Jesum Christum, Filium Dei Unigenitum. Deum de Deo, Lumen de Lumine. Deum Verum de Deo Vero. Qui propter nos homines, et propter nos tram salutem, descendite et celi.
Ruci fixus et siam pro nobis, supponsio pilato, passus et sepultus est. Et ascendit in celum, sedera dexteram patris. in spiritum sanctum dominum et vivificantem qui ex patre fili oque procedit. Et unam sanctam catholicam, et apostolicam ecclesiam. Et expecto resurrectionem mortu onu. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, as we rejoice at the birth of Jesus, our Savior, we turn with confidence to God our Father, praying that the peace and light which Christ brings will be welcomed into the world. We therefore ask him to hear our petitions. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Cardiglione, Father Kevin Kennedy, pastor and rector of our cathedral, and for the entire church, that Christ, the Prince of Peace, may always be a light to the world for those who live in darkness, and that we, his followers, be examples of truth, of mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace to all people of goodwill on earth, that the peace for which Christ offers will be a reality for all, and that our hope be strengthened in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely, the bereaved, the sick, and all those who are suffering in any way, especially the victims of war and terrorism, that the light of Christ may shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health of all the sick and for those in need of prayers, that they be consoled and strengthened by Christ our Savior, the light of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that Christ, the just and merciful judge, may grant their souls a place of eternal rest, light, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Mary's cathedrals, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, Father of all, the darkness that covered the earth has given way to the bright dawn of your word made flesh. Make us a people of this light who bring your life to the waiting world through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord's Lord, sacrifice and your hands. Praise the Lord in his name. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the wholesome powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Benedictus, qui venit, in nomine Domini. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. 
and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise for the offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tuam, Annunciam Hustomine, Et Tuam, Resurrectionem Confitemur, Donec Venias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, O Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Asia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Precepti salutaribus moniti, et divini institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat renium tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis hodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Libera nos quesimus Domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tu eduti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui a tuum es renium et potestas, et gloria in secula. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. <clears throat> We invite practicing Catholics forward who are prepared and properly disposed to receive communion. Others present are invited to join us in prayer and in song. The standard practice for receiving communion in the United States is to stand. However, if you would prefer to kneel, we will provide kneelers in the center aisles for you to use.
Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, loves your light. Radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth,
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may, through an honorable way of life, become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. We would like to thank the Guardsmen of San Francisco for our beautiful Christmas tree and thank Lucy, Michelle, and members of the Grupo Mariano for our exquisite Nativity Grotto. Please help us reach our 2023 goal for the annual appeal. All donations by check must be dated and postmarked by December 31st. All cash or online donations must be received by December 31st in order to be applied to this year's appeal. Thank you. And before we conclude, I just wish to take this opportunity on behalf of the whole Archdiocese, it's my privilege to do so, to extend you all a very Merry Christmas. And again, thank you for joining us tonight for this uh, Midnight Mass, beautiful ceremony of, for Christmas. And also, some words of thanks to those who worked so hard to make our um, Advent and Christmas celebrations possible, beginning with our pastor here at the cathedral, Father Kevin Kennedy, and his faithful associate, Father Gerald Geronimo. Thank you for your hard work and your, all the staff and volunteers who worked so hard. And also, thanks to Father Patrick Summerhays, our vicar general, um, my right-hand man in residence here at the cathedral, for joining us tonight. And uh, so many have worked so hard with the decorations. You've seen the beautiful nativity scene that, as we just heard, some parishioners worked very hard on, put a lot of hours and, and love into that very beautiful scene. And uh, also to um, our music director, uh, Chris, Dr. Chris Tietza, and our cantor, Ash Walker, and all of our singers and musicians for enhancing our ceremony so beautifully. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, may the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.